Are you writing the methodology for a research paper or a thesis? Then you definitely want to stick around for this video because I'm going to show you how to present the research tools and procedures in a research paper or a thesis. And this is going to work regardless of the field that you're in and really regardless of your topic. The, the elements that you need to use there and the language are pretty much the same, whether you're doing teaching English or uh, quantum physics or maybe biology or something else. So let's dive in and let's see how this is done. So now just to give you an overall perspective, um, usually at the beginning of the methodology, you first start with presenting what or who you studied, right? And I've got another video where I go into a lot more detail about how to do this. So this is your participants or this is the things that you've studied, like, I don't know, some particles or enzymes or maybe some animals, right? And after that, you need to tell us how you studied this thing or these people or animals, right? And this is, you know, research tools and procedures as it's called in some fields or in other fields, it's just called methods, right? So especially in more um, exact sciences, we have materials and methods. So we're gonna be talking about methods. Whereas in other fields, it's often called research tools and procedures. And you might then start giving it descriptive titles that reflect the actual tool that you used. So how do we write that? Before I explain you step by step, if you're new here, my name is Marek Tichkovek and I run Academic English Now, where I help PhD students and researchers regularly publish papers in top Scopus Index journals in the field. So when it comes to presenting research tools and procedures, or methods as it's sometimes called, what you want to do first is to plan it out and to divide it into the different research tools that you've used. That's the easiest way to structure it. So sometimes, you know, we, we use different tools to study one phenomenon. So to give you an example, you might have used questionnaires and you might have also interviewed people. So you've got these two different research tools. So it would make sense to first present one tool and then to present another tool. Similarly, you know, maybe you analyzed particular enzymes using different tools, right? Um, don't ask me for names of tools for analyzing the enzymes. I don't know them, but maybe you do. So post below in the comments section. But you know, you might have used some kind of mi microscope. You might have used this technique and this technique and this, right? So these are basically kind of your tools that you use. And again, if you have more than one, it kind of makes sense to present first one, another one and another one, right? So you want to subdivide your methodology section by the research tools that you've used and give it subheadings, you know? And in those subheadings, you should just say what research tool you use. And then you wanna be presenting each tool and telling us just exactly how you used it. What did you do step by step? And I'm emphasizing here did because throughout you're going to be using the past tense. And also very importantly, you're going to be using the passive voice. If you've already pressed the panic button because you have no clue what the passive voice is, don't worry, it's actually pretty simple. So what you're gonna be saying in the methodology, rather than saying, I used questionnaires and you know I interviewed 10 people, you're gonna be saying stuff like, a questionnaire was used in order to blah, blah, blah. And then you're gonna be saying, you know, uh, 10 enzymes were studied using Right? So you're going to be saying was studied, were studied, was used, were used a lot. Past tense and the passive voice. So now let me maybe show you how this is actually done with an example of a research paper so you can actually see it in practice. So I'm going to show you two different examples from two different fields. One towards more towards social sciences, more specifically psychology and the other one more towards, you know, um, exact sciences, uh, more specifically from bioscience and engineering. So let's start maybe with the uh, more exact sciences. So in here, what, what you're going to see in the experimental section, which is, you know, the, the methodology section, there, there is no specific subsection called, for example, instruments or research tools. But instead, what's very typically done is that um, the researchers, the authors just list 
you know, the name of the tool or the name of the procedure, as you can see here, protein fibrillar isolation, zematic treatment and protein fibrillar isolation and so on, right? So it's more kind of descriptive and the subtitles tell us exactly kind of what research tool or what procedure was used, right? And then, you know, each of them is presented in detail. So as you can see in here, you know, there's particularly quite a lot of different research tools and procedures that are, that are being used. This might not be the case for you, but as I mentioned before, if you're using more than one research tool, then the most logical way to organize this section is just to have, you know, one subsection for each research tool and then present exactly what the procedures were for this particular tool or instrument. And you want to be using, you know, um, the passive voice and past simple, um, as in here, for example, was boiled, right? Um, was cut, right? Um, and you can see that there's, there's very little of sort of I or we, um, and everything is in the past simple tense. So don't say like, you know, is cut or has been cut, you know, but we always wanna be using the passive voice. And, you know, to make the passive voice, it's pretty simple. You take the verb be, and you put it in the past tense, so it's gonna be was for singular and were for plural. And then you take the verb, right? And you put it in the third form. The vast majority of verbs in academic English are regular, so the only thing you need to do is to add um, ed. Uh, there's a couple that are irregular, like shaken and um, cut, for example, that I showed you here, right? But um, most verbs will be regular, right? So it will be boiled. So that's how this section is structured if you're doing something more, you know, in exact sciences. Now, if we move more to like social sciences, and again, please note that this might vary on your specific discipline. So like what you definitely want to do is also check against papers in your specific subfield to see exactly how this is done. But it will be very similar to what I'm showing you here. You know, in this case, you can very quickly see that, you know, the, there is no name of the specific technique that is used, but it's just called instrument, right? Um, in some other field, it might be called research tools and procedures, right? And what the, what the author does here is just present the research tool or the instrument that was used, right? And if you're basing your procedure and your research tool on something that um, has been used before by other researchers, then you need to explain it to us, like the author does here, right? Is based on, right? And then the author explains in what way, you know, um, this tool was adapted, you know, which questions are included in this questionnaire and so on, right? And again, you can see that it's passive voice and in the past simple tense, right? So was distributed, was used and so on, right? And notice that, you know, that there is a lot of specific description in this case of a questionnaire. So if you're using a questionnaire, you know, you, you want to tell us exactly what this questionnaire um, included, right? And similarly, you know, I didn't point it out here, but notice how specific the description in here is, right? We know the exact um, volumes, uh, the ratios, the, the temperatures, and all that needs to be listed here specifically. So in this video, we talked about how to write the research tools and procedures section of the methodology, or in other words, sometimes called methods, as in materials and methods. And if you want more personalized help writing and publishing research papers, if you wanna get feedback on a regular basis, if you wanna get guidance and a proven step-by-step -step process that's helped over 270 PhD students and researchers already, then definitely schedule a free one-to-one -one consultation with my team. The link is right below this video. We're gonna meet you one-to-one -one and discuss the challenges that are stopping you from achieving your goals. And then we're gonna show you how we might be able to help you to publish research papers more regularly.